Baghdadi addresses the assembled audience and proclaims himself the caliph and the ruler of Muslims worldwide. He proclaims the victory of Zarqawi's political project nearly a decade earlier. Uh, they now control a swath of territory containing some five million people. They have a war chest of some two billion dollars. It's a remarkable success for an organization that was soundly defeated in 2009. Baghdadi had turned Zarqawi's vision into a terrifying reality. On the eve of 9-11, we have 400 pledged members, you know, people who pledge allegiance to Osama bin Laden. But now, they have countries, they have armies, they have tanks, they have missiles, they have stuff that Osama bin Laden did not dream to have in his wildest of dreams. That was a clip from the new Frontline documentary, The Secret History of ISIS. The film premieres tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Time on PBS, and filmmaker Michael Kirk joins us now. Good to have you on. Thank you. This looks uh, incredible. Um, so what are, I guess, what is the most astounding missed opportunity and uh, lay out for us the reasons behind these missed opportunities? So for um, ever since the war, ever since 2003, I think I've made seven or eight films in Iraq and each time I say this is the last one I'm going to make. Uh, sometime about five, six months ago, some people came forward who hadn't spoken before. Colin Powell is one of them. And I've always wanted to say, so what was that speech all about? I mean, it sort of started everything that happened. And another was a uh, CIA analyst named Nada Bakos. Mm -hmm. They came forward. They started to talk about a guy named Zarqawi, who we all remember from the headlines at the time. And we thought Zarqawi dead, buried in 2006. But by putting the pieces together, part, what we've done is sort of organize the way that ISIS got started clear back then while the president and the National Security Council... Was it 2006 after Zarqawi's death? Starting in 2001, 2002, right, right. after, uh, right as Powell is getting ready for the speech, right. analysts are finding this guy who's been repudiated by al-Qaeda. Right. Uh, Osama bin Laden doesn't want anything to do with him. He's right. kind of a lower and, class. And, and yeah. also, after the Jordanian bombing of the wedding, uh, there were actually uh, Sunnis in Iraq that started turning against our Cali. Uh, uh, in Iraq, yes, but, but not for a long time. I mean, he is the guy who pulls together all those uh, defrocked uh, soldiers that got dumped off by uh, Paul Bremer. Uh, back in right. when he first gets there. You got 250,000 armed, unemployed men. You've got this terrorist who's been anointed by Colin Powell at the speech. He, no. Powell tells us, I don't even remember. I mean, it was sort of a passing reference. You discovered right. that seven minutes of his speech was about this guy nobody would ever heard so, of. So, so let me ask you, let's bring it to present day. Yeah. I was talking to a diplomat uh, from the Middle East who said, actually, what ISIS has going for it more than anything is the fact that Tehran runs Baghdad. If you're a Sunni in Iraq, there's Absolutely no way you're right. fighting for the central government. And that's what Baghdadi, the heir apparent to Zarqawi, has been waiting for over in Syria. They, get, they almost get him down. Petraeus and others tell me they had 37 guys left in 2009. Obama comes in. We pull the troops out. These guys head to Syria where there's unrest, which is what they need. They build themselves back up and they wait for something bad to happen in the Sunni to the Sunni up in the north. As soon as it's bad, they get invited back in and history gets made by 2014 when suddenly, as uh, Chuck Hagel says in our film, Suddenly there's this, like, suddenly this group comes in. We hadn't been paying attention. We didn't know who they were. And they take over uh, Ramadi, Mosul, Fallujah, right. and they're in place. And where are we? We're nowhere. So in, in terms of real time today, dealing with ISIS and, you know, Syria, that whole region, we showed a clip, massive numbers of people sitting in the National Security Council meeting. Yep. So in terms of marrying intelligence, to decision making. Is the group just too big today to come up with a specific set of decisions to deal with ISIS? Well, we're degrading. Since 2014, Obama kind of wakes up and says, okay. 2014. Maybe we should, 2014, summer of 2014 says, okay, here we go. America, Russia, Iran, Saudi, lots of people trying to degrade them, right? Uh, the Shia in Baghdad. They are degrading some of the territory, but the problem is ISIS, A, is holding on to lots of land in Syria and in northern Iraq. And they've also declared a kind of worldwide a war, a global war, 
uh, in Paris, in Brussels, in 40 affiliates, 90 attacks over the last a uh, couple of years. So even though we're degrading, even though there is now a policy to degrade, not put a lot of boots on the ground, but degrade them, what's going to await the next president mm. is what awaited Bush and what awaited Obama. Both of them failed dramatically over the time to do anything about ISIS, and now they're going to have to do something about ISIS all over the world. And you showed Chuck Hagel uh, repeating uh, a critique that will we'll be emblazoned in history about Barack Obama's foreign policy, that they have scores of people and yet it's a couple of inexperienced advisors running foreign policy. Chuck Hagel said, called Barack Obama the most inexperienced president uh, we've ever had being advised by the most experienced, inexperienced group of advisors. The interesting thing, Joe, that I've discovered over making all these films and spending lots of time last fall, I made a Netanyahu and Obama film. And one of the things you discover is no matter how many experts are around him, talented or not, in the end it's really his decision. Even when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of yeah. State, in the end, all of it rests with the uh, with the man in the chair in the White House, the professor, yeah. the whatever you want to call him, as he kind of reasons and rationalizes through things, believing that if you could sit at a table with somebody even still, you could talk to them and, and come to an agreement about something. But if you have a lot of people at the table and the stakes are very high, so far, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't found the, the key to unlock what to do about it. And the this NSA is, has just become so massive, not unwieldy. It's, it's a, a huge organization. And often, it will come with some, in some cases, if you look back at the Syria policy, it's come with some unanimity to the president and said, we think you should do this arming the moderate rebels for a while right. in, uh, in Syria, and he, and he says, no, no I'm not going to do doesn't listen to him. All he right. just doesn't listen to him. Frontline it. investigates the secret history of ISIS. It airs tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern on PBS. Everyone should. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.